Thanks to GearFocus for sponsoring this video. Sony's unleashing the new A7 IV, dream camera, what's in it? For clarity, just, just in case anybody's listening to this, Josh, is, Josh isn't saying this, we, neither one of us, we're not breaching an NDA, we don't know yeah, anything about an A7 no IV. <laughs> yeah. We're just gonna try, to extra, we're gonna try to extrapolate based on what's happening next. Like, in order for me to sort of make a positive review. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. I reviewed all these other cameras. So if I were to be excited about the A7 IV and make a review where I said, this is great, uh, then this is what I want to see. So yeah, like you said, $2,000. I'm okay if they want to bump it up 5%, 10% because it's a new camera. But we need to target that that price point that they hit previously with the A7 III. Uh, it still needs to be in that price point. Like 1700 to $2,000 range? Yeah, the 1700 is the sale price though, or the A7C or whatever. So I think for brand new, we probably need so, to be realistic at what, 2199? So, I don't know, okay. whatever, right? But that's that's the high end. I don't want to I don't want to see a three thousand dollar camera. We got to fix that because the A7S III is already thirty five hundred. It's funny. A lot of YouTubers have that camera, but the a lot of the public still hasn't switched over yet. Yeah, you get comments all the time of like thirty five hundred bucks is a lot. Right. It is. A it lot is. Of money, it's a, dude, that's an expensive camera. And there's also that p people that are held back about the 12 megapixels on the A7S III. So we need a 24 megapixel, because nobody complained about that with the A7 III. So we need that 24 megapixel 6K sensor. I'd like to see them do that a refresh so that we can get the same rolling shutter performance and dynamic range and stuff that we saw on the A7S III yeah. and the A1, but get that on the new hybrid one. If you give us that, and then the new menu and the new codex and everything, we don't, it doesn't need to be as much. So maybe you can't do 4K 120 with a 6K oversample. Fine, I totally accept that. But what I would love to see that I don't think a single camera is doing right now in all aspects at this price point would be up to 4K 60 from a 6K sensor oversampled. So you get that A7 III sharpness, full frame for, yeah, like 2000 bucks with Sony's, you know, autofocus and lenses and all other stuff. There's options. There, the Panasonic has 4K 60 full frame, but it crops in to 1.5 times. And would you want 6K 30? Uh, you know, if if for some reason... I'm not a greedy I, man. I, <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to be greedy, you know? Because, yeah, the Panasonics do that, right? You can do 6K or you can do 4K 60 or whatever. I feel like that might be their only answer to Blackmagic in the 6K realm because Blackmagic 6K Pro is 25 and the 6K is 2,000. So... A lot of but people But those are... have all, always existed. And I think people are happy and they buy them. So I think there's a Sony shopper. And the Sony shopper is somebody who probably likes to also take photos, wants those Sony right. lenses, and likes autofocus. And because Sony prioritizes autofocus so often. I agree. So there's a difference there between I'm OK with manual focusing. Then it's like, well, then Blackmagic has had you covered for two years, right? So we're talking an autofocus camera, which is why it's already different than Panasonic. We're talking Sony's autofocus, we're talking full frame. I want 10 bit, It's and we're not yeah. going back to 8 bit ever yeah. again. So <laughs> give me 4K 10 bit, 4K 60 10 bit, and uh, it seems like people want the flip, the flip out screen. In body stabilization, I've, no crop. Yeah, all the new stuff. The new IBIS has been much better on the A7S III than the previous ones. The new, the new rolling shutter is so much better. The yeah. new dynamic range is better. The nit brightness on these screens are like, I mean, these yeah, they're just, they are just awful. It's like not even 500. I think it's like 350 or something. You know what I mean? It would be it would be interesting because you got to think in terms. Those screens are so small that they could have an ultra bright setting that would allow you to monitor. So you can you can monitor in you know like full nit brightness, like a thousand nits or something like that for a short period of time, like monitor brightness setting like they have now. But instead of going up to like 400 nit, it goes up to a thousand. You could. Do you ever use the sunny weather? Yeah. Sunny, uh, sunny weather setting? Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I think it takes yeah. it from 350 nit to 400 nit. I could be wrong. I, I'm not sure. Exactly. It, I mean, it, it boosted enough to be useful in many situations, but yeah, under direct sunlight, it's yeah. still. I would personally, I would rather have five batteries in my pocket than have to lug around an external monitor just so I can shoot S log three and make sure I'm exposing properly, you know? And that brings me to my second point. I would like to see them import your own color grades. Why is that not like a, a thing? 3D LUT? Yeah, 3D LUT slot. 33 or point yeah. 3D LUT. Import those. It's not that hard to do. You can then monitor in camera what what you know what you're shooting. So if you're shooting S log three, you have a you bought your favorite S log three LUT from you know your from who is Matt Johnson or whatever, and you have it imported in there, and you're nailing exposure every time because you're previewing it with that exposure for sure. 
how often do you shoot log and you're just shooting log and you're like, you can tell the difference between a third of a stop. Like, oh, that's a third too bright. I can't. But when I have when I'm previewing with a LUT and it's got like 1,500 nits and it's telling me exactly, it makes a difference, yeah. oh my god, it's like it's dialed in. So that would be great if they said that. That and if Sony added open gate, you know, if Sony had some sort of open gate camera, that would be that would be wild. I think people would be happy even with just DCI. That that's lacking in the photo cameras. They're the now, hybrid why cameras is or whatever. DCI interesting? I think for some people's jobs that they they require they're like we want DCI and so they just it's just a non-starter for them. They go, "Well, I just can't get that but camera." But why DCI specifically? Like can't you, you can just crop. Sure, you, right? I mean, I, you're I, going I, from I'm I'm not I'm not 100% on this cuz I I haven't actually asked enough follow-up questions, but from what I've gathered from the complaints, it's that some people shoot and then release the footage and the footage has to be in certain spec. It's the same reason why like Netflix has their like certified cameras or whatever. Right? So they're like, we want DCI 4K and we want it in true 24P. We don't want 23.98 and we want the 17 by 9. We want all that stuff. So if you're just somebody who wants that job and you're looking for a camera, you buy the camera that does that. So I mean, maybe it's not a huge, obviously the A7 III sold, but it's like the best selling full frame camera. So obviously it's not going to break Sony, but right. if they want to not be a non-starter for some customers, if it's not a huge problem to put in DCI options, maybe you know. that's something that's coming to the FX line then, you know, because well, the FX are... has them, yeah, but that's that's what they would say, right? They'd say, well, you can go buy our FX cameras, but if you're does the FX cost th of... does the FX three have that? DCI? No, I don't think so. I think that was one of the biggest. I'm pretty confident about this. Is one of the things was like, what makes the FX three a cinema camera was like a common question going around because like, well, it doesn't have DCI, you know, so it's it's just an A7 S three. I don't what I don't understand rehoused. is. Is if the FX3 is still a three by two sensor, yeah. why don't they give you that whole sensor to use? Why are you only using 16 by nine? Give us the whole three by two and give us an anamorphic. In video, right? And, you mean? Yeah, yeah, give us an anamorphic mode. The sensor is there. You're using it to take photos. So just tell the processor to give us this other mode. I'm sure like the frame rates aren't gonna work exactly the same way because you're processing more data, you know? You could give us an anamorphic mode very easily and give us more resolution. I, I don't know. A lot of things are going are leaning anamorphic. You know what I mean? Now that lens prices and anamorphics are coming down, there's more information on how to make your own yeah. anamorphic lenses. Like you can get some really really interesting looks for like you know maybe a thousand bucks or fifteen hundred bucks. I'm talking about yeah. like these custom modded anamorphic scopes that are like 1.5 stretch. You can basically add a taking lens and you know one of these AV I think that there's a Sony is obviously always trying to walk that rope of like this is a photo camera and a video camera and some of those features are far into the video side of things like right. anamorphic and stuff like that so right. I feel like maybe they're just like eh, that's not hybrid you know that's video and we'll make a video camera for that although I don't think that anamorphic is really emphasized in most Sony products you know what so. I, I'm just gonna switch to Panasonic that's it that's that's the answer <laughs> Panasonic's got open gate. It's fine with me. They do, yeah. For if you want to shoot anamorphic on on like a body like I've that, never then, yeah. shot yeah. on a Panasonic. I think somebody handed me a GH4 once, and I was like, oh, like I was like looking at the menu. I was like, oh my god, how am I gonna? Which, like, if I didn't say already, the new menu, the new menu has to be in the A7 IV. Like that's a. Uh, oh, I you can't I go you know, backwards, dude. Yeah, you my can't go backwards. My favorite thing that they implemented is probably the save load setting. Like, um, agreed. Yeah, I, I use it every time you firmware update because it wipes your camera sometimes. I just save it to a card, update. Well, you know what's great card, is I, you know. I actually um, gave away all my settings for free. I just have them on my website oh, yeah, that's so, another... you can, so you can download <laughs> Digital them. Digital product. <laughs> well, yeah, it's but it's like it's also something like you can just like if, if you lost any step of the way on my tutorial, you could just download it, plug it in, and then you could you can go in there and physically see what I changed. You know, and then and it makes it back upable for you. Yeah, yourself. exactly. If you, you know, if you had to RMA a camera, you could just upload your settings to the cloud when you get the new. The camera only thing in. it doesn't work with is if it's uh, what version you're on. If you update it past it, it won't work. Do you, do you ever, did you ever use your A7 III much for photos, or was it pretty much video all over? Dude, the way? now I don't even. Uh, so first of all, I've never really been much of a photographer. I don't. My brain does not think in terms of taking photos. If I am rolling video and things are moving or, I, or the camera is moving, then the composition clicks. 
But if I'm like, I got to hold here and then I got to like frame the, uh, my, uh, I don't know what to, I don't know what to film. Or I don't so know. you don't have much wants in an A7 for no. in terms of the photo no, no, no. side. No, but I, I will tell you that now with, I mean, with the 120 slow-mo on the A7S III and having it basically be looking exactly as good as the 4K 24 frames per second, like yeah. there's no image loss. I just shoot everything slow mo, and then I do screen grabs, and then I'll just punch it up in in Premiere. So I'll just run it through, or sorry, not Premiere. I'll punch it up through Photoshop through their. Um, I do AI stuff like that for my thumbnails. I do for thumbnails, but I also for printing out, you know, photos at the house. You know, twelve megapixels mm-hmm. holds up. So a, a a screen grab from four K one twenty holds up just fine. You know what? about the 4K 120, I was thinking, because I thought it would be greedy. Like, I really want that 6K oversample thing. I figured asking for that and 4K 120, that seems like the camera's just gonna melt, right? So if for some reason you can't give us that, then I'd be okay with them giving all us the 4K options line skip, just like the A1, right up to 4K 120. And people who own a Ninja 5 or whatever could record an oversampled version that way. And then probably Sony would do their raw thing as well with Atomos. And then maybe in that regard, because it's a 6K sensor, you could get your 6K maybe less restrict. I don't know if it'd be 6K DCI or I don't, I don't know what the framing would be, but maybe get a 6K raw to the Atomos then. I would still be okay with that if you want to do line skip 4K in order to keep a 6K photo sensor, but then still get 4K up to 120 like you like, we can do oversampled externally or 6K raw externally. I mean, I actually, I, I, I also don't mind Super 35 mode too. I thought that's pretty. I thought that's pretty handy. And that would be the advantage of having the 6K right. sensors for people who like to punch in. They would then be getting a one to one, dude, 4K on there. Speaking of which, I don't know if you. Um, so I have here. I'll show you this. So this is the A7 III. And yep. I hooked it up to a micro. Is that the Vazen? Yeah, this is the micro, but this is a micro four thirds mount. So this is the lens I did Anamorphia with, right? And I shot yep. this on the Black Magic. But I got this adapter that allows you to. Uh, does it? Do you have to crop in? Like, does it have a vignette, and you have to crop it, in? It or? does, but if you put it on Super Thirty Five mode, right? Yeah. You now. I you, mean, that's you that's smart. pretty much get that image circle to close. You you lose most of the vignette. You still have to punch in a little bit on the zoom, so you have yeah. to go in like one point one, and then it's completely gone. But you probably don't even need to do that because you're stretching it out one point eight. So, um, but I was like, wow, so you'd be this able is to maintain that. On yeah, this theoretical so shooting, A7 IV, you'd be able to maintain that. So I'm shooting micro four-third lenses now on the A7 III. And I was like, dude, I kind of want to try this trick with the uh, with the A1. Because then what's the, what are you getting in Super 35 mode? 4K? Or are you getting 6K? It does a, I think it's like a 5.7 Five, or something like that. Wow. Sampled. So then you could get 5.7K anamorphic mode. I mean, that would give this lens enough resolution to really see i mean you'd have to do the anamorphic yourself there's no built-in anamorphic. yeah i mean that's, yeah, not, yeah. that's not that big of a deal though if you're shooting externally to a monitor you know in that yeah, case you can you, 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 you the... squeeze it there but the idea that like this lens is one of the most aggressive like it's a 1.8 squeeze and it's 3200 dollars, which is is definitely expensive but when you compare it to other lenses like this lens is a steal like you just don't get you don't get two times squeeze for less than eight grand. You know what I mean? And, and yeah. at 1.8 gets you pretty damn close. And so, um, I don't know. I think that might be one of my next videos is testing out that. But it's only 20, it's a $20 adapter. It's totally janky. Like, look at this thing. Like, this thing <laughs> is like, it's like. But Did it, you get it on Amazon or something? It, yeah, I got it on Amazon. It's not Prime. So it's like, you know, they shipped it themselves. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, you got to get another one. This little tiny thing, <laughs> this little tiny thing is holding up this big giant lens. Like, I don't know. I don't trust it. I mean, I do kind of trust it, though. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll shoot it. <laughs> I'll put it on a gimbal. <laughs> well, Josh tries to reassemble his lens. I need to raise some money to pay for all the editing work we commissioned for this series. So big thanks to Gear Focus for sponsoring this video and helping us do that. 
While it's fun to speculate on some theoretical a7 IV, the truth is the Sony a7 III, as well as a host of other last generation cameras from other brands, are still extremely capable for most people's content creation needs. So whether you're shopping for a used camera today or selling your a7 III tomorrow to save up for a hypothesized a7 IV, Gear Focus should be the platform you choose for those transactions. The interface is simple and intuitive, and they're constantly adding new functionality to help you buy or sell your gear more efficiently. And best of all, they offer the lowest fees in the game. Well, if you're like me, the best aspect is that you avoid all those annoying questions and lowball offers you get from conventional marketplaces. Basically, in my opinion, Gear Focus is the best platform to sell your gear currently, and they're only getting better. So thanks again to them for sponsoring this video, and make sure you check them out using the link in the description below. Any other thoughts for theoretical A7 IV that uh, you could take advantage of that you think is realistic? I mean, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put this out there. So Sony, <laughs> put it out into the universe. Hopefully Sony <laughs> listens. Give us full frame, three by two mode in video mode. That's what we want. I, I gotta be honest with you. It's not gonna happen. I, we can we can make this an official kind of like you know gentleman's bet where I like <laughs> I'll tell you you were right and I was wrong. I just don't see I don't Dude, see I it know. happening. I, I don't know. see it happening. I know it ain't gonna happen. They'll be like, but look, you can fire photos at 24 photos per second. There's your three by oh, two but, mode. Oh, but yeah, but look, you you have this product mode where the focus focus on the anything with a label, it'll focus on. You're like, come on, man, like give us something we want. Like, you know, we're we're being picky with some things and other things, but I I really do think based on what I've seen in the comments. And based on the fact of how well the a7 III sold and kind of what the world wants, like people were impressed with some of these latest Sony cameras, but the only complaint I ever read about the A1 is that it's too expensive. That's the only thing I've ever heard anybody say. And I remember when the a7 III came out, some of the comments at the time were something like, it's kind of like, a, it's like 90% of an A9, but for way less. If they could do something like that with the a7 IV, where it's like 90% of an right. A1, but for like 20, yeah, 2,000, 2,200 bucks. Sony just texted me just now. They know we're talking about oh, yeah? it. I swear to God. Yeah. <laughs> I swear to God. They just texted me. <laughs> um, let, me see, let me see what they want. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, hey, hey, Josh. Oh, have you reviewed an FX3? No. Nope. We were just talking about <laughs> we were just it. You've reviewed an A7S3. It's the same, same camera. <laughs> uh, that's um, funny. Yeah, Wait, shut them up quick with an they're FX3. Worried, they're worried they're going to lose me to Panasonic. You know, maybe. Maybe I might I might just do that. I might just go switch to Panasonic to see how many people I can take with me. Here's here's what I'm thinking. If Sony does watch this, yeah, listen listen to what I'm telling you, Sony. I I like I know what the market wants because like I talk to them all the time and I read the comments and stuff like that. If you do what I'm saying, then not only will the reviews be stellar across the board, but there's no pr price barrier for a lot of those people now. Yeah. If if there's no technical limitation for doing it, then just do it and just rake in the money. And they if they could if they could do something that's just a little bit better, like if you could give us the 240, not as as it is on the A7S III. Like if that's just a hair better, then you'd be like, oh, the like HD 240. Yeah, frame rate. Gosh, yeah. that I was. Looking I haven't at really that used that one much. It's. On, uh, on the A7S3, or the, is that the one you yeah, said? Yeah, on the really A7S3, like the 240. It's right. very, very, very. Uh, I mean, you're like the codec is just shredding apart. Yeah. All right. So 2000 bucks. Let's do a little quick recap. 2000 bucks. Yeah. 4K60. The, the new, the new system that we've been seeing the last couple of cameras. Yep. Like you said, you can't go backwards. Yep. So we want the menus. We want the 10 bit. We want the codecs. We want, we want, the want flip, everything you've and established. And we want the flip screen. Yeah, because when I talked about the A1, that was the only other complaint is some people like, right. I would got it if I had a flip screen. Right. So the people want the flip screen. So give them the flip screen. And then as far as the s Cinetone thing, you can't not put it in now because we've already seen that you right. can stick it in everything. And so if it's got the new menus, put s Cinetone in there. I don't really care about s Cinetone that much, but I know people like it. So Dude, just put people, it in there so that nobody can say, there's no s Cinetone. s Cinetone so much. Yeah, so put it in there. Just put <laughs> it in there so that there's no complaints. And then and then every YouTuber will be like, I don't know, I looked at it. There's, there's nothing wrong with it. So and it's only two grand. Buy it. And then that's the video. The video is 45 seconds long. Yeah. It's everything you wanted. Take care. There you go. Yeah. Next time on Josh's channel. Are YouTubers filmmakers? Filmmaking is, you know, probably used a bit too liberally on YouTube. We are not gold miners. We're the guys selling the shovels.